as Cactus here and today I'm carrying on the Doctor Who theme because I want to talk about what I think are the five worst villains to be In its run of over 50 years, Doctor Who has had some of the best villains ever on TV and some of the most recognisable. But it's also had some of the worst. Number five, we have ghosts. This one at the bottom, because admittedly it's a bit broad, uh, I am l literally talking about ghosts as a whole rather than a specific type of ghost. But I really, really am tired of seeing ghost stories in Doctor Who. These ghost stories are even necessarily bad, in fact a lot of them are actually even quite good. It's just that they become really predictable and formulaic. You can guarantee that the first half of these stories always pans out like this. Doctor, it is a ghost! Ghosts don't exist. Why does it look like a ghost? Well then, this ghost must be an alien. I think a good example is Before the Flood and Under the Lake. The reason for this is that it's actually quite a good base under siege story, even though it's quite drawn out. But it still does that same thing of trying to make you think ghosts are real when you know ghosts aren't real. And then the Doctor proving they're not real. And it just got really boring. Not to mention that the Fisher King was massively underused in, that, uh, in those couple of episodes. But it was just the same. It was like Army Army of Ghosts is another example. It's a fantastic episode. I love it. Uh, I even like the whole Ghostbusters thing. A lot of people say it's like one of the worst Tenth Doctor moments. I actually find that really funny. But so formulaic. I don't believe in ghosts. Kind of reinforces this. But it just becomes really boring when the opening credits roll and you already know what's going to happen in the first 20 minutes. It annoys me just because I feel like I have to be biased towards an episode just because I'm annoyed about seeing the same thing all the time. absorb a lot. Important to remember that this creature was literally created by a 10 year old child who won Blue Peter and that said child reportedly was unhappy with the fact that the creature wasn't the size of 10 double decker buses. The idea in my eyes is actually fairly solid. I like the idea of this creature being kind of able to blend in and that like at the touch of his skin you are just absorbed rather than, you know, the kind of general, you, you just die. But apart from Love and Monsters being one of the show's worst efforts, there are two main reasons why this monster failed. First being the fact that it is the reason that a talking paving slab is forever considered canon within Doctor Who. It's a relationship of sorts. We've even got a bit of a love life. Oh, we oh, let's... We've even got a bit of a love life. life. Oh, let's oh, not let's... go into that. The second comes in the form of its portrayal, particularly through Victor Kennedy. Peter Kay is actually a really good comedian, and you only have to watch Phoenix Nights or even some of his stand-up to get that. But when you watch this episode, it is just... There just seems to be no comedy. And I've always said that like a lot of Doctor Who episodes that are quite bad can still be enjoyed because of their humour or the fact that they're just quite fun. I think The Lodger's a good example of that. Whilst the episode itself isn't tremendous and the whole love wins all thing is beaten to the earth and just straight up stupid, the episode itself and the camaraderie between the Doctor and Craig is quite good. Um, and the idea of the upstairs flat is quite good but in Love and Monsters and in the Absorbaloff and Vix Kennedy like I say it's not funny, it's not clever it's just downright stupid another, another little problem is that the Hoix is actually really cool and I know he's appeared in Torchwood a bit but why can't we have the Hoix he's, he's cool and he looks cool not a big blubbery green shit Three, the Macra. Um, I've never seen Terror of the Macra. The main reason for this is that it was broadcast in 1967 and since the episodes are completely lost, uh, I've not bothered with it. I've not listened to the soundtrack. To my knowledge, it's not been animated. So I've just never bothered with it. 
Gridlock, however, in the new series, um, was a solid episode. Uh, probably one of the best of series three. Um, obviously, it sets up for Utopia and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's also a nice little return to New Earth. You get a lot of kind of character development between uh, the Doctor and Martha um, and see the Doctor on his own. I think in terms of getting people to like Doctor Who and telling people to watch Doctor Who, I feel like it's one of the best ones to get them to start with. Uh, a lot of people always say Blink is a good one, especially, obviously, if you're talking about Series 3, people always say start with Blink if you're going to try and get into Doctor Who. And I feel like that is actually one of the worst episodes to start with Doctor Who with. Because it's not Doctor Who at all. The Doctor's in it for like two minutes. Um, whereas Gridlock, you get a lot of the Doctor being on his own, Martha being on his own. You get all the sort of alien creatures. It sets up for the series finale. Uh, the Macra are fairly, you know, like a good idea. But they're just stupid. They are absolutely stupid. I don't know exactly because I've not looked into it, not going to lie, but uh, they were seem to originally be made of, of sort of, you know, wood, cardboard, all kind of thrown together to give this kind of crabby look. Uh, and then they've just kind of got springs with like ping pong balls. For, uh, they look ridiculous in the um, original series. And I get that they're on a shoestring budget. Everybody knows that. Obviously, this was 1967 it was very difficult to make something look convincing uh, but they do look ridiculous the whole idea of giant crabs is ridiculous I believe the whole point of uh, the Macra Terror is that they just kind of kidnap people um, but I don't know it's just stupid unlike some of the others on this list it's kind of difficult for me to be passionately annoyed at how bad they are because there's not been that much effort gone into them, like I say, in the first place. They've been in Gridlock. Gridlock was a good episode. They've been in the Macra Terra. Like, nobody's seen the Macra Terra for 50 years. So it is difficult for me to give, like, a full judgment. I just know that the idea of giant crabs is stupid. I know that if someone came out uh, in this day and age and said, let's do a giant frog for a villain, someone would probably be like, that's kind of stupid. Um, so, yeah, basically... One of the worst Doctor Who villains, the Macra, because they're stupid. I'm going to throw a bit of an oddball in here, and that's because I didn't want this to all be kind of new Who. There are plenty of bad characters in the original series, um, and there are plenty in the new series. But I feel like there are possibly more in the new series, mainly because there are a lot more standalone episodes. Obviously, you don't have serials going on for months and months, and that means that you have the opportunity for characters to shine a lot more, or just look plain shit. Or you could just keep, you know, giving everyone the same characters over and over and again. What do you mean the Weeping Angels have been overused? I want to see them do some cool stuff again. Like snapping necks and backflips. I also feel like a lot of the bad characters from the old series aren't necessarily main villains anyway they're just there and they're stupid like the giant clam in genesis of the daleks or the giant rat in talons of wang chiang or the there's, there's a lot of giant stuff giant dinosaurs i mean the episode is pretty good actually but they just look that giant dinosaurs dinosaurs do not work in Doctor Who. i want to throw the curveball it's just because i thought it might be quite interesting um and yeah, so, yeah, here it is. Number two, Turlo. A lot of people kind of think of Adric in terms of one of the worst companions, but Adric kind of had his standout moment in Earthshock, whereas Turlo never really had that. He was just kind of there. A lot of villainous side of things, the reason I think he's so bad is that he just doesn't really ever do anything that's that villainous. It just kind of mildly confuses the Doctor sometimes. But it kind of... It feels like the writers are trying to do this thing where they go, oh, this is a bad guy, he's going to become a good guy. You're never going to be quite sure which side he's on, though. Except you, you are never sure which side he's on, 
just because his character's kind of dull. Uh, like I say, he's just kind of dull. He doesn't really do anything, especially when you stand him next to the Black and White Guardians, which are obviously constantly tampering with the Doctor. Number one is Grandfather. I think that I'm slating the first Doctor here, but I'm actually blaspheming against a more literal god. Someone actually thought, why have a god of the sun when you can have a son who is a god? What if the sun was a god? I can't believe nobody ever thought of that. This isn't even the worst idea in Doctor Who. The moon is an egg. I can't believe nobody ever thought of that. So, after they make the sun a god, they also make it a sentient life form, which, to be fair, has been done before, though not so terribly. Seriously, why don't people like 42? I, I get the whole uh, thing that Chibnall is obsessed with countdowns, and that, uh, you know, Series 11 is probably basically going to be just a giant countdown. So the sun needs feeding a sacrifice, which is this little girl who sings. So then when the doctor gives him his life, this guy that's been around for 2,000 years and seen all of time and space, the birth of stars, the death of galaxies, literally been to the end of the universe, that's not enough. It's not enough. So then, this apparently immortal villain is defeated by a fucking leaf. If you haven't seen this episode, I'm being serious. A son is defeated by a leaf. And you might try and say that it's, it's well established because it's like, it shows you the beginning of Clara's life and it's all about the possibilities of what could have happened. But they didn't happen, did they? It's just a leaf. The leaf has nothing to do with that. It's just it's just incidental. The leaf was there. She still has the leaf. I'm not sure on the whole life cycle of leaves. I'm pretty sure the leaf would have just completely crumpled by, by that point. It's not exactly well preserved. It's inside a book. I don't get how a leaf is more important than a 2,000 year old Time Lord. The last of the Time Lords, uh, kind of, until Clara went in everything. And it, I, it's a leaf. So that's my list, I'm pretty much done. Uh, if you uh, are probably wondering why I even watched this show that I have so much passion and hatred for. So, uh, if you find out, let me know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, go in the comments below and let me know what you thought of uh, the God Son thing. And yeah, as always, thanks for watching. Adios, amigos.